Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
Jesus told this parable to those among the Pharisees who loved money. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gates lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, when he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and sent Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. The man who had been rich said, Then, Father, I beg you to send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They had Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Jesus told this parable begins today's Gospel to those among the Pharisees who love money. So basically, this gospel parable was entrusted to those of Jesus was trying to help them to love God and their neighbor more than money. In a way, he taught them this. He, in a way, also teaches us to love God and especially our neighbor more than money, more than riches. And in a way, wants to feed God, who feeds us also, wants to feed through us other people in the story of Lazarus. But we heard in this story that people were hungry, in a way, many were hungry, and that hunger was not addressed, was not taken care of in the time of Jesus. They were not given food as the example of Lazarus showed. The rich man did not care at all about his neighbor. In a way, there are many hungry today as well. Most of us have food, most of us, I would say, have plenty of food, but do we give to those who are in need or do, do we refuse? Do, who is our Lazarus? Who is your Lazarus, whom we are invited to take care of? What is the food that we are supposed to give them? Potatoes, pasta, rice maybe, uh, meat, canned uh, things, canned food, peas, chickpeas. There will be an opportunity to place them there. Or donation to St. Vincent de Paul as well. A way to feed the poor. But do we do it? 
Do we do it? Do we take care of our name? And what is the food we should ask ourselves uh, that people should eat? Because it's not just food that we place in the basket or money that we donate to the poor. Let me give you a story. Imagine there were four, four salmons, salmon, a fish that is swimming uh, through the rivers. Yeah? And if, I don't know, have you seen any salmon swimming against the stream in the Yoshima River? They were, some of them are looking tasty and gorgeous. So imagine there were four salmon. First two salmon, they were biting each other. And they got injured and they could not continue their trip. The third salmon stopped to feed himself, but the place was a bit toxic. It was a bit like there was something coming toxic and the food that the salmon was eating was bad. So it damaged the uh, innards, the stomach of the salmon. And the salmon could not continue to swim and it died eventually. The last salmon, the fourth salmon, avoided that bad food avoided the fishermen and he had avoided also the bears that were waiting to eat it and arrived to his destination eating good food what is the food because we are similar to salmon what we eat affects us and i'm not talking only about the physical food there is spiritual spiritual food that we eat, that we receive. And I would say that is, there is toxic spiritual food, but there is also good spiritual food. Uh, what could be uh, toxic or poisonous or bad food that kind of does damage to our inner organs, to our bowels, to our heart? What is it? So nice people, as in the example of Jesus who seek, sought to correct the, the greed of the Pharisees. So hunger for money, there was a spiritual hunger for money for the goods. Some other hunger can be expressed in a bad way through seeking a excessive use of alcohol, for example, or abuse of drugs. A lot, there is also lots of struggle with people seeking uh, to satisfy their profound spiritual hunger through images which hurt or activities which are harmful, immoral behavior. So those, those food make our life bitter spiritually and can harm us as it happened in the case of the third son. Our inner gets sick and we cannot continue to swim to our final destination. But there is also another type of, that is harmful, which is a refusal to eat good food. To refusal to eat good spiritual food. And that could be uh, when people, people don't come to be fed by the Lord, by His Church. In uh, I read statistics that in Germany in 2020, 500,000 people abandoned the church uh, because they uh, did not want that the, I think 10% of their taxes, which would be directed, I guess, anyway, to the government, they did not want it to be directed to the church. In uh, Netherlands, only 4% of Catholics comes to Sunday Mass. So there is a refusal to be fed by the Lord, which is deadly as well. Imagine someone trying to swim against the current, but refusing to eat food. Is it possible? It's not possible to swim against the current of this world, which seeks to swipe people away. But what is the then the spiritual food that can satisfy our heart, the human heart, the, our soul, the food that we are starving for and we don't know what is it. 
So the, there are several meals, I would say, or ingredients that come to my mind of the spiritual food that we crave even if we don't know it. The first one is the Word of God. The Word of God that is proclaimed. Jesus says the man, the human, does not live by bread alone, by frit frit money alone, by, by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In the prophet Amos, we hear God says to the prophet Amos, I will give them hunger for hearing the word of God. Yours and my soul hungers to hear the word of God. The second ingredient or the second food that our soul desires is the righteousness. Well, what are you talking about? Well, Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 6, verse six in the Beatitudes, He says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So the Word of God directs us to seek a life of righteousness which comes from God. Righteousness which is in a way food to live life in a right way. That is the food that God offers to us. What is the third food or third ingredient in a good tasty spiritual meal? Well, Jesus says in John's Gospel, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life within you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true food. So what is the true food? It's the flesh of Christ. What is the flesh of Christ? It is the Eucharist. When we eat the Eucharist in proper way, in, with healthy inner organs, uh, we are able to be fed, nourished in a proper way. So those three ingredients, in simple terms, the, the Word of God which teaches us what the righteousness is, and the Eucharist, which enables us to live a righteous way because we will receive the righteous one who is the Jesus Christ, enables us to be spiritually fed with the food that we crave profoundly, even if we are not aware of it. Then the question is, are we feeding ourselves with a true, good, tasty, delicious, mm, spiritual food, or are we hungry? Hungry because maybe we are eating some other food which is not good for us, or just because we refuse to eat this delicious, mouth-watering spiritual food. So that's the, that's the question for us. And if, uh, if we are eating it, it's important to eat it well. If we are not eating it, we are hungry. And how can we feed others if we are hungry? How can we love our neighbor if we don't allow God to love us? How can we treat others in a righteous way if we don't allow the righteousness of God to dwell within us? So God wants us, God wants to feed us and to feed others through us. If you are today refusing to be fed by the good word, the good food of God, ask Him to help you. Ask Him to help you to reject bad food which is destroying your life, which leaves you half dead, being drawn away by the current of this world. What God wants to do, brothers and sisters, with each one of us, He wants to feed us with His word, with His righteousness, with His body, when we, our hearts are healed by His reconciliation. And then we are able to give physical food to our neighbor and also invite our neighbor who is spiritually starving to come to Christ, to be fed by Him, to find the true food of life. 
So, brothers and sisters, now, who is your Lazarus? Whom are you invited to feed? Physically, enabling them to take care of themselves, but also, whom are you invited to spiritually invite to come to the source of true food? So, but in conclusion, Jesus addressed the Pharisee, Pharisees who loved money with a parable, and in a way it's word also for us. He wants to teach us to seek true and good food by which we can be fed and feed others. God wants to feed us and others through us. But as we could hear, some refuse to eat the good food or others eat bad food. And that's also for us. We are in struggle of whether we would eat bad food or refuse the good food. But if we allow God to feed us with the good word, food of His word, of His righteousness that we receive through Eucharist, we are then fed and enabled to cordially feed those in our needs with physical, material food and spiritual, immaterial food of Christ, of invitation to come to Him. May the Lord help us all to be well fed, with full bellies, not just of our body, but with full bellies and full hearts, filled with Christ, so that we may also, with full strength of Christ, feed others. Amen. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious fire, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, to God who invites us to respond to the needs of our community, let us turn to the Lord in prayer, that we may have eyes to see light of the needy and ears to hear the cries of the poor. For the Church called to share the riches of the Gospel with the world, for the pastoral work and priorities of the Canadian bishops, and for the people and clergy of the Diocese of Toronto, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For those who work to protect the young and vulnerable of society, and for all who are models of faith for us, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For the safety of our young people and family members, and for all who share their time, talents, and treasure for our benefit, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish, especially Joan McGrogan, Joseph Cesar, John Krasinski, Joe Wisniewski, Gabriel Moore, Gary Gardner, and Mary McDermott, and all those whose names 
entrusted to us that God may be with them through their journey of faith in life. We pray to the Lord. The Lord is good, our prayer. For our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. The Lord is good, our prayer. God of heavenly feasts, who see the pain of those in agony and in need, give us, we pray, a compassion that springs from your heart, opens our lives to the misery of others, and puts into action the message of your Son, who calls us to new life, and who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Only the seven ones. Number two, two, four.
them your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be coerced in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his birth, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Register at our parish 
uh, sign up, update your contact information such as phone number or email address or physical address of your home. There are also missiles outside. I've heard the tradition at Holy Crosses that to offer them free of charge. This is for the current year. If you don't have one, you can pick one at the exit from the church. I wish to all of you a good Sunday and a good week. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, Seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And would you please join in singing our special hymn? It's found in the Catholic of Worship, number 652. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, number 652.